Namaskarams to all. A very good morning. Kritagya is very happy to welcome you all for this morning session, a lecture demonstration on my Guru's music uh, with a beautiful topic, Tapastirtha Pura, Ratna Shobha. My father and Guru's music, though much spoken and written about, researched, analyzed, is timeless and evergreen. His ideas, his approach, his creations were much ahead of his time. Whenever we experience his music, whether as a rasika, student, performer, teacher, we always have something new. It reveals something new with regard to intricacies, dimensions, aesthetics, and new interpretations as well. Anna and I have known Sri Shailesh Ramamurthy a research scholar, a wonderful flautist, very knowledgeable, eloquent speaker. We have known him for over two decades and we have closely interacted with him, exchanging music and musical impressions. Shailesh's uh, in-depth understanding of the Lalgadi music, the Lalgadi Bani, and his very eloquent and uh, clear expression has made these interactions very uh, interesting and engaging to us. Today I am very happy that Sri Shailesh has accepted our invitation on behalf of the Krithagya Trust. He is here accepting our invitation and he has traveled all the way from Bangalore braving the Karnataka Bandh and uh, he's going to share his wonderful thoughts, very thought-provoking um, findings about the Lalgudi Bani. Thank you all for coming. I'm sure at the end of this session, you will go back with new perspectives, new understanding of the Lalgudi Bani. We are all looking forward to your session. Shailish, over to you. Thank you all. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha, it's my great privilege and honor to be invited before this esteemed and august audience by Kritagnya Trust, instituted by Sangeeta Kalanidhi Srimati Lalgudi Vijayalakshmi Avarhal. I deeply thank Sangeeta Kalanidhi J.J.R. Krishnan sir and Sangeeta Kalani Srimati Vijayalakshmi for providing me this opportunity. Especially given that this is the month of his Jayanti, the 90th, 93rd Jayanti. So it's my great honor, privilege to be with all of you. Sangeeta Vidwan Gale, Sangeeta Rasikar Gale, Sangeeta Sakhradiyar Gale, Periyur Gale, Ungalelorukam Enudiya. Namaskaram. Shall we begin the session? Thank you. Is the audio clear? Thank you. So a few words about the title. The title chosen is Tapastirtha Pura Ratna Shobha. It translates to Sparkle of the Gem of Lalgudi. So Okay. Sri Guru Bhyanamaha, mic testing. Okay. 
So about the title chosen, when we talk about Tapas Tirthapura, it is actually the hallowed Kshetra of Lalgudi. When we talk about Ratna, it is the gem. When we talk about Shobha, it is the sparkle, the glitter. In the title, One is Sri Lalgudi sir himself is the gem. Ratna se Shobha no Vechinda. He is the gem. Indeed, he is the gem. Lalgudi Ratna, he is Bharata Desha Ratna, he is Vishwa Ratna, and we are going to see his Shobha, his sparkle. The other way is Ratna Nam Shobha, Adavadu, his works are the gem. So whatever tip of the iceberg we'll be touching in terms of the renditions, his works, etc., they are the gems, and we are going to see that those gems glitter as well. It's my humble tribute to him. This word Ratna also has special significance. We know that Sadhguru Sri Tyagaraja Swami sanctified the Kshetra by his Lalgudi Pancharatna. Of course, this temple is a Tevara Vaipusthalam, which means it has at least 1400 years of antiquity. There are also two Tripugars on this Kshetra. The other reason this Ratna word is very significant here is because His Holiness Mahapiriva has discussed with Sri Lalgudi sir about how the word Pancharatnam can be interpreted in the context of the Lalgudi Pancharatnam. Each one is a Ratna, right? So there was a small discussion about each one being more appropriately called the Ratna rather than the Pancharatna, so let the five become a Pancharatna. So there is a special significance for the choice of the word Ratna here. About the Kshetram, this is one of the five Shivasthalams in that area, in that Lalgudi district. Lalgudi, there is Tirumangalam where Anaya Nayanar, the flute playing Nayanar attained his, I mean that was the Avatar Kshetram as well as Mukti Kshetram, Puvalur, Nagar, Tirumanturai, which I am blessed to have as my Kuladevam, Amravaneshwara. So moving on, we will be playing certain audios. They are all sourced from public domain mostly. And they are being played under what is known as a fair use copyright clause. So we will be just presenting an excerpt from each to exemplify the aspect we want to highlight. When we think of Sri Lalgudi sir, we often think of the singing violin. I would like to point out that when we talk about the singing violin, right, it is not just about the lyrics. Of course, lyrics are a very important component which we'll come to. But before that, we are talking about the warmth, the resonance of the human voice, the continuity both in terms of the time dimension to hold on a note as well as the glides between the swaras. All that on an instrument requires tremendous virtuosity. It's understated virtuosity. We will come to that aspect a bit later. So let's start with the concept of Nada. Philosophically, Nada is classified as Anahata Nada and Ahata Nada, the struck and unstruck sound. Rather, I should have reversed it to say respectively. This is a very profound philosophical concept. But to come to the practical aspect of Nada, Sharangadeva says, Na Nadena Vina Geetam, Na Nadena Vina Swaraha, Na Nadena Vina Nrittam, Tasman Nadatmakam Jagat. The last line is very interesting. It says that the whole world is imbued with nada and there is no music, there is no song, swara, etc. without nada. So when we think of the tonality, because when we talk about the practical aspect of nada, we look at the fundamental, the overtones, the tonality of the instrument. We see that his violin is unsurpassable in many aspects of tonality. By the way, when I talk about uh, Sri Lalgudi sir, I have the highest respect for all the other, the plurality of other schools as well. But today, since the occasion is about Sri Lalgudi sir, I would like to highlight many things in superlative there. Right. So let's start with the famous Bilahari Alapana, which is a very, very celebrated LP released in the late 60s and early 70s. Let's enjoy and imbue ourselves with the Nada, the Nada Poshaka, which has been given here. I'll just start playing out. Each one may be just a minute here. (laughs) 
So we see there is a natural valinam melinam. So we see there is a natural valinam melinam or you know uh, modulation. Modulation in the Western sense is different. It pertains to Grahabeda, but let's not get into that hair splitting. The tonal modulation is what we are talking about here. But it should be very natural. It should not be something which is contrived. It should not be something like the waxing and waning of a radio wave. So that kind of organic, natural feel is what we get when we hear this. I hope all of you observed that. The next one I would like to play is a small snippet from, again, his LP of Charu Ke Alapna. You can see when he starts with the panchamam, the vibrato there and the type of tonality has so many layers of sound and as it goes on, of course, his Charukeshi is very special to all his rasikas and to all the music rasikas. Apart from the panchamam starting, we also see the madhyamam has such a special ethereal quality. It's not the mridu kampitam in a conventional sense. It's not na na na. It is not that. It is na na na. That kind of an effect we do here, right? And that has made his charukesi very special and disambiguated from other ragas which share the same sarigama. So that's something all his lovers will cherish, relish. The third example I would like to play is a snippet of Duduku Gala. This is from a concert recording available in the public domain. I will first play the clip. <laughs> All the applause must go to the great person. Thank you. So here we see how he has embellished first in a canonical way the Charanam line. He is playing the Swaram incidentally, not the Saitam here. Then he uses the Panchamam string and has a double string effect. Then he uses the higher octave and then he uses the Mandra Shajam. And here we see that he has extended the tonal canvas again pertaining to the theme of Nadam. So what a vocalist can do versus what we hear from a violin, we see a very you know, judicious use of the tonality, richness, resonance of the violin. In fact, when he goes to a mandra shajam, we know sari sani sari, sani sari, mama sari, ma rima sari, sa sa sa. But a violin, it has a very rich range, but the mandra shajam, we cannot go to anumandra nishadam. But he has suggested the anumandra Nishadam. There is a saying in the world of surgeon, what the mind does not know, the eyes cannot see and the ears cannot hear. Which means we need to know what to look for, right? So, but here what is interesting in the psychoacoustics is that he has used the lower shadjam string to suggest the Anumandra Nishadam with the right amount of uh, Nada Poshaka. In fact, the celebrated violinist here also, I have relished the way in Todi when they go to the Mandra Shajam and have suggested the, you know, Nishadam below that, just pure psychoacoustics because the violin physically is only having the pitches above the Mandra Shajam, right? But, mm, na, 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 na. so those kind of examples have really relished from um, Sri Lalgudi sir, Sangeeta Kalanidhi celebrated, and all the other violinists here. So these kind of things have to be really relished and uh, appreciated both 
in the white boxed sense, as I may call it, as well as the black box sense. We should have the big picture and the micro picture, macro and macro, micro. So that's on the theme of Nadam. And indeed, I would say, we are talking of, since Tapas Tirthapura, he is an Nada Yogi, Nada Tapasvi. So, the next is what I would go to the lyrical aspect. As I said, Nadam is the bedrock, Astivaram. So, using the Nadam, we have layers in our music. The Nadam, if you have Nadam for a single note with the fundamental and overtones, then we talk about Shrutis overlaid on Nadam. Whether we quantify those Shrutis with an exact fraction or a qualitative aspect is beyond the scope of this discussion. It's a musicological one. So Nadam, Shruti, those Shrutis give rise to Swara and connection between the Swara give rise to what we can call as the Gamakas in a broader sense of the word and to be beautify the Swaras we also need Anuswara. In fact, Anuswaras have been called by great musicologists as Anuswaras, the atomic Swaras. And when we hear the great violins here and from Sri Lalgudi sir, we always relish things like things like that, right? So how that knee or the ga is embellished in Nayaki, right? That becomes, or even in, see these things are very important from a listener's perspective as well as from a scientific perspective. If we actually look at a pitch time graph, you see so many interesting patterns. I have, you know, had occasion to rejoice. Even the re of a Saveri. It's not It doesn't stop there. There's a higher note which beautifies that. So those kind of Anuswaras are what we can say are so atomically beautiful Anuswaras. They don't have an identity of their own, perhaps they don't have a sthanam defined, but they do so much to embellish our music. So that is on the concept of Nada to maybe Gamaka to Anuswara, but now we'll look at the lyrical aspect. Let us look at how he has embellished this Janani Ninuvina Swara Sahityam. In fact, the way he plays Dikkavarma itself requires a separate discussion. I'm not getting into that today. But let us first listen to the Swara passage of the Swara Sahityam. <laughs> Here we can see it is an orderly aligned, you know, slotted swaras that are going on, right? And the second line, it all comes in fours. Let's look at how the sahitim flows. I think all of you observed that when he plays a swaram, he plays But when it comes to Sahityam That's how the song goes. So that is such a beautiful way. He has been a Margadarshi for the instrumentalists because in the Parambirikirdhuvandi even vocalists can learn a lot and have learnt a lot 
vocalists of all generations have learned a lot from this kind of uh, approach, right? So if we back project it to the dimension of sound, I mean, rather than uttering as swaras, if I just look at it, I mean, you must excuse my playing for a few seconds in the midst of his esteemed music, but here is something. That's how the swaram flows. And the second line. But when it comes to the sahityam, I'll just play the second line. Or maybe from the starting. So when we back project it to the sound, these are the kind of details. All the applause to the great one. So we see that these are the details we must appreciate. It has been, of course, appreciated by everybody how Tirada Vilayata Pillai, Anathavam Shaidane have been embellished beautifully by him. But so much of hard work has gone in by him. And this is where I would again like to say, what the mind does not know, the ear cannot hear. And if we know that this is going on, we can appreciate it at a different level of depth, right? So I would like to just uh, and even in Jagadanda Karaka, when he plays, Sapamari, mm -hmm, Sapama, is different from Srishti I mean, Karaka, but I'm just giving the example of those Samyukta Akshras, shortening the duration of the Nada flow, right? Even we know things like, Chakani, mm -hmm, that kind of an example. But this has to be used judiciously. The nadam cannot be cut off when it is chakani because it will be chakani. It will suggest rimapa. So he has such a sense of proportion, which technique to employ where, and that adds to the wholesome effect and the holistic effect. For a sahityam which is well known to everybody, I would like to play an example of that. And I'm sure you will all appreciate it without any explanation. see that he started with Nadu, Nalla Nadu, and then Parukulle Nalla Nadu, right? And these are the kind of things which shows the kind of involvement he had with the whole content, the intent of the composer and the bhava, right? If Devi is bhava ragatala modini, we see that he is the embodiment of all of these aspects, bhava, raga, and tala or laya. He also used kala pramanam to judiciously deliver or render the greatest of compositions. Let's hear in his own voice what he has to say about this aspect. In a kapa to put it by Yarka, Balia, Woka Kola Nesi, Uru Ambu Putu Ravi Baluni, Suri Putrana, Sugrivana, Rajuga, Gavinchi Juchi, Walin Woka Kola Nesi, Ravi Baluni, Rajuga, Gavinchi Juchi, Broche, whatever. Tiara Swangu, a papa of Red Winter, Yellati or Manaskanala, Bria Path, Kirtrela, Serenchi, Kirtrela Padilla. Bali 
we see how sensitive he has been to each of the aspects and how he has used it so judiciously to highlight everything which is sacred. It is said that what is sacred must remain secret, but we are trying to just look at it from a Rasika's viewpoint. The Kala Pramana also, we know that greats like Sangeeta Kalandi Sri Palakad Maniyayar has called his music as embodying Brahmalayam. Brahmalayam. And we, if you carefully observed in the previous clip, Parukule Nalanadu, you can hear his talam, you know, as he's playing, right? And uh, it's a great thing for an instrumentalist. I mean, his feet were better than the best of hands, I would say, for the talam. So, then we talked about the Kala Pramana to highlight the Artha Bhava. There is also the dynamics. We talked about the Chinnada Perisur, Valinam, Melinam. But let's look at a line like, Drona Karna Duryodhana Dihara, Draupadi Mana Samrakshana Kara. So when he is playing, especially the second time he plays, you can observe it even more. Drona Karna Duryodhana Dihara. You can see that he is being very forceful there. And when it comes to the more delicate sentiment of Draupadi Mana Samrakshana Kara, you can observe it yourself. I don't need any kind of explanation to be given there. such a beautiful way to highlight the Sahityam. This is indeed, I mean, this was a AIR uh, Sangeet Sammelan, I think, in 1981 with Sangeet Kalanidhi Sri Raghu Sir on the Mridangam and uh, Sri J.J. Arana on the violin. So we will move on. I would like to take a small example here. It's the very popular Kriti, Manasai to Lord Tune. I would like to point out a small aspect, but let's listen to the second line of this small audio clip and then we will try to understand what's happening. <laughs> So here we see that it's slightly different from what we are used to. What we are used to in the second line is Okay, then we say This is what we are used to. The alignment is shown in the right side here. Okay, But here what he has played is we find a very interesting old patam. See, I must say that we can't rank the blossoming profusion of an orchard, never rank the flowers of a blossoming pro profusion of orchard. We may see the modern version also being handled to communicate better with the Rasikas who are culturally conditioned in a particular way. So it's not my intent to point out that one is better than the other. But let's try to understand what's happening. So here he has played, you know, Manasaya to lor tu ne na man viche ko na ve Oh, Manasa, that kind of a, and first I had heard this recording, it is an old one, maybe from the 60s, but when I came across this notation from Vidushi Srimati Padmavati Anantagopalan, you can see that this version has been notated by her, 
but that's not all of it. I'm going to come to the next point. Before that, if you look at this version, the second, uh, I mean, this Manavi starts from the Samam. So there is a beautiful Prasa Maitri between Manasa and Manavi. Of course, Manasa and Dinakara in Anupalavi have Prasa Maitri, but an added beautiful poetic, you know, embellishment here, like the Edugai Mone in Tamil, the Prathamakshara and Vityakshara Prasam, Manasa Itulortune na Manavi Che Konave. So we see Mana and Mana kind of align. Whenever the Talagraha has the same syllables, that's how we view the Prasam in music. When we say Kshina Mai, and we say gir vana, that vana starts in the same tala graha, so kshina and vana have prasam. So here also, when the manavi comes on the samam, there is a beauty of prasam. And this is an old, you know, uh, probably an old precious partam which he has essayed earlier. And it's possible that he has used the modern version also. As I said, both are equally beautiful. Just a quick English uh, version of Srimati, Vidushi Srimati Padmavati. Uh, mommy's uh, lotation. But that's not all. I went and looked at some old publications like Tyagaraja Hridayam of Sri K.V. Srinivas Iyengar of 1922. And there also we see the same thing. Of course, there are small differences. Manavini, Chei, but that's okay. But Mana starts on the Avartanam beginning. Similarly, Kritimani Malai by Sri Rangaraman Jayanga. You can see a similar kind of formulation. So again, it is not a one-off partantaram. It is something which is a precious partam which we must appreciate. Whether we choose to essay the modern one or the ancient one is purely an artistic decision. So I'm not getting there at all. But let us try to appreciate all these aspects from his. See, our Sangeet is Nariya Shravanam Manirke. So that's why, I mean, in a humble way, I must say that. So that's why all these things have been eye-openers, I must say. So. That's what I would like to say about this Manasa Ayatulortune. As I said, he is Bhava, Raga, Laya, all in one. And I'm carrying calls to Newcastle if I'm essaying a few lines here. But the point is we have myriad melodic and rhythmic. In fact, the Western ethnomusicologists call it melorhythm. So there are so many constructs in his composition, but as has been pointed out by the most distinguished, uh, you know, uh, duo in their legdoms, that the Raga Bhava Talindu Vara Madhuri over composition or co, and Laya Apu Antar Gatamar co. It's not going to be very aggressive or something. So there are so many, and the Yati Prastaratla Avaru Or Nipunatma Attaniyo compositions le. He has so many other patterns in his mind, but I'm just saying it's a learning for all of us. He has used this 32 unit and 33 unit in so many different ways. Right? For example, if we say, Sarima Pada Sarima Garisa Dapama Pada Sadapama Dasari Anjelian Varayo. We see this kind of a that is a form of Gopu Cheti, right? But we only hear Sama. We do not hear, you know, sevens and fives and threes. Or if we say, Sagama Pamagasa, Sagama Padani Pamaga, Sagama Padani Sagasa Nitama Samela. We hear again, you know, we don't hear I mean, we do hear it, but it's not going to spoil our sense of Bahudari. Bahudari is flowing in its beauty, right? There are a few cases. These are purely, you know, from uh, my listening experiential aspects. I mean, what he thought, I mean, maybe far more profound, right? So in Mohana Kalyani, we do see a pattern like, hmm, Again, Tirmanam for the last chapter, Saram. Sariga Pamaga, Pamaga Pada Sanida, Sari Riga Gapa Pavela Vun Sodera. This is what we hear. He could have, it is basically, 
ಹೈಡ್ಬಿಹೈಂಡ್ curtain of music of mohan kalyani of course there may be very deep reasons why he chose uh, sari re ga ga pa but i'm just saying that even in the yamuna kalyani tillana we find uh, a similar example right that the last uh, cluster has an elegant variation even when we think of a nalina kanti which has samayati right rimage ri sani panir ri sa you will see all these are equal but when we go to sagari sani pama pasani we think of pasani pama gari manni pa he could as well said pasani pama gari maara koti he has never done that he has always given it and the maara koti roopata abdiye varnichirkar araha so and or delicacy right it has always been pasani pama gari maara koti roopa so all those delicacies come in right so the seed thought has been there and then it has been refined and embellished and presented to us like the most sacred whatever you can say amrita sara bhakshanam right so in some cases like his shanmuga priya tirmanam sariga sari ni sa padani padam pa sariga sa sada shri ni vasan perumai a lesser mortal would have said sari ga ma pa da shri ni vasan but he has shown us the yel malai the abdiya shigratla thooki vechirkar illa so i mean but the point is musically we do find many times in his kalpana swarams also there is a beautiful i should say it in a lofty way not in a casual way there is a beautiful twist in the tale right so you do find when he plays ga pa da sa da pa ga da pa ga pa sa hari nannu pa it's never just a predictable pattern we find something delightful right so these are some things as rasikas we should all enjoy as music aspirants we must learn from i would like to bring about a small you know i would like to comment on a small aspect on the devagandhari varnam office i mean there were some mus- musings in some quarters about the jaru in the charanam of this devagandhari varnam that kind of uh, aspect is there so uh, uh, this jaru was commented upon but there is a precious patham of um, you know sitavara where we find aikashashari ramu brahm that kind of a thing right so we do find a very precious um, and rare usage there of course there is another patham which is equally pedigreed which is akash shariram but i never knew what lalgudi sir's patham of uh, sitavara sangeetha is the sahitya of sitavara sangeetha is very interesting um, it says those who are ordained by brahma only they can get sangeetha gyana anyway so when we come to um, you know his own rendition of sitavara sangeetha which is quite rare i found it only 3 years back in a you know mm-hmm. online version let us hear his own jaru from that kriti and probably he has you know cherished that and used that of course there have been very beautiful um, you know descriptions of how it images the um, uh, vedanayaki devi saraswati and uh, the lotus and all that but i would like to first play this akasha shariramu as played by him and it indeed has that kind of an effect that kind of an embellishment
So we do find that same usage, which is a beautiful jaru, and it indeed, as uh, uh, Sangeeta Kalandi Srimati Vijayaka has pointed out, it is also shows the slide of a petal of a lotus, right? So I would just like to say that he has used such rare usages. So we talked about his laya, we talked about the kind of patterns we see. Our kaiye pirti konde laya kadal ke chala mudir de. Illa me vara prasadama rakhe, yeah. And uh, it gives a new dimension. Prachi na varnalam kathan da pran. Oru pudiya aalathe yer padtham in the mari varnalam padam pani na. Sorry for any small glitches in what I might have presented there. So that was, I would like to now play a small um, Sangati, um, I mean, he, in his own voice, let's hear what he talks about his, you know, beautiful way of seeing a Sangati. The most important facet of Yakriti is its a Sangati structure, which is an amazing evolution. The Sangatis are like the petals of a rose, one on top of mm -hmm. another resulting in an extremely beautiful musical artifact. Tyagaraja's imagination bloomed in full the artistic expression of Sangatis that reflected the music and the Sahitya Bhava effectively and colorfully. However, we must remember that their kritis were really their offerings to God and did not envisage the present day culture atmosphere. Therefore, in the present day atmosphere of Sabha Kacheris, certain adaptations are understandable and Sangadis should continue to be purposeful, appropriately relating to the Raga Bhava and Sagitya Bhava and should not be for the mere sake of Sangadis. So we see such a beautiful thought. Okay, so this was about the Sangati. Now let us look at how he has beautifully essayed the, you know, Koniyadi na Napai. The Kalahastisha Pancharatnam of Sri Veena Kupayar. Right? Uh, the Pallavi itself is Kunuyadina Napai, Ni Kopamu Seyamera. Right? And uh, as we can say, it's just, you know, Kunuyadina Napai. Ennal Kondada Patta Unakki Enmel Kopam Yen. That's what is the way we can look at the Kunuyadina Napai. Right? And see, in very time honored compositions, uh, the Sangati structure has been followed so rigorously that there is less room to, you know, modify anything artistically. But even there, just like uh, Pushpa Vrishti, you see the Sangati is flowing like um, the way he beautifully described it, right? Like the petals of a um, beautiful flower, right? We'll be hearing that. In fact, this Kriti is very beautiful because the Parameshwara is Kala Sammara Murti and his protection of Markandeya has been essayed in the Charanam and also his sportingly swallowing the deadly Kalakuta Vesha, Kalakuta Visha or Hala Hala Vesha, right? So I would like to play this until the Pallavi lasts. Um, it will take a couple of minutes or slightly more. Thank you. 
must bow our heads down in terms of the beautiful and grand progression of the Sangatis in this Kriti. Without any sense of aggression, all of the Sangatis have been essayed. A similar example comes to mind in a celebrated album or LP of Naji Vadhara. Uh, it is like very graceful waterfalls, right? And it's like a duck paddling furiously underwater, but on the surface it looks so calm, serene. It's like small etchings on a tiny rice grain. And this was recorded, I mean, I'm talking about Naji Vadhara here. This was a concert recording, the Kunyad Nanapi. The Naji Vadhara was recorded in a time when there were no modern editing facilities and all that. It was really, you know, uh, I would say a marvel. And only a person who has attained that kind of Siddhi can present that kind of Naji Vadhara. And that has become a trend setter. So many vocalists, senior vocalists have derived inspiration and followed the same pattern. I don't want to probably mention names specifically here, but definitely it has happened. And in his own concerts, you do see multiple small variants of Naji Vadara, which gives us even more, you know, uh, Brahmananda, so to say. When we talk about virtuosity, I've already said that virtuosity can be used either flamboyantly to dazzle and captivate public, or it can be used in an understated way, right? Uh, we've already talked about how the notes connected beautifully with a beautiful tonality can, you know, uh, enhance the gatra shakti, right? So before coming to some of these examples, what I would really like to say is in a violin, when there is a sa string and a pa string, and you need to go from the ma to sa or something like that, you see that intensity in his playing with a delicacy, which can't be essayed here, of course. But just to give a prelude, I would just say that if there is something like, you know, or in Natakaranji, so we do find uh, that his, and I mean, he has used many intense prayogas in this kind of range, right? I mean, that is one aspect of virtuosity, but I have also highlighted where he has used virtuosity for a bit of um, larger musical goals. Here you do see the speed, you do see the fine synchronization between the bowing and the fingering, and it's not only virility, we'll come to those kind of um, points, but let's first hear this Sri Maha Ganapati Ravatumam, we will just hear it, and you will see why I would talk about virtuosity. Here, he has used the Arohanam and Arohanam as Sarimapanisa, Sanipama Gamarisa. Okay? So it is a 6 plus 8 pattern, which is 14. He has given 4 units per swara, 3 units, 2 units, 1 unit, and then half unit. Let us hear that. And he has repeated the half unit for 3 times. <laughs> Such a fine synchronization between the bowing and fingering is required for essaying this so perfectly. And there's a larger musical goal. It is beautiful gaula, which is across the columns, right? Or different columns. Hmm? Thank you. And the perfection epome Brahmalaya Murindrika. Adhadavandu Durmarga Charala. Or a chinna correct sequence. Between the uh, uh, you know correct uh, in the samam and then when it goes to half avartanam, he has so beautifully woven. Go hmm? later, Thank you. Thank you. 
கேட்டுட்டே இருக்கலாம் The other thing is, the year is totally arambichirke. So the thing is, in this music, we find the beautiful syncopation patterns. The musical syllables and the beats of the thala always, um, you know, uh, in some cases bisect each other, in some cases they are in beautiful syncopation patterns. So here, it's not a trivial pattern at all, right? That kind of uh, accuracy has beautifully pointed out about the kala pramana, chuddham and accuracy. So this is about Durmarga Chara. I would like to play this first. So we can see how beautifully he is woven in and out of the uh, you know, positions or the atoms of the Koraipa sequence between Mel Kalatishram and uh, Chaturashram and finally capped it with a, or, you know, with a climactic finish, right? Beautiful. So the other aspect of, so these are examples of his virtuosity. I have not played examples where the virtuosity is uh, more patent or explicit. But there are many uh, concerts in his duet with uh, Sangeeta Kalandi Sri, uh, Sri Dr. N. Ramani sir. He has played fast bow strokes on the top, I mean gone up to the top of the fingerboard and even beyond, you can say between the fingerboard and the bridge. And Abdiya Suswarama Erekki Rikkar. Jaruva Erekkarudu Araha Rukhon, but Suswarama, Swarma Swarama Erekkarudu, you can see that kind of virtuosity. I, I didn't want to play those kind of clips here, but I must mention it for the sake of completeness. So, uh, the next aspect I would like to, I mean, touch upon is very subtle Grahabedams, right? So here we see a Grahabedam in Shanmuga Priya, right? Um, <laughs> Thank you. 
So this is such a beautiful example of a subtle Grahavedam. In fact, I must mention that there have been beautiful audio recordings in the recent past, last year, I believe, during, I mean, when we were all celebrating the um, Sangeeta Kalanidhi, um, you know, uh, prelude. There were beautiful things like this in the Mirage series with uh, which uh, uh, Sangeeta Kalanidhi's Sri JJR and, and Srimati Viji have given us. So here what happens really is, in Shanmuga Priya, he cannot use the full scale to establish Kannada. He has used a few notes or a small subset. The sequence of notes also in Kannada is going to be different from Shanmuga Priya. In Grahavedam, normally the source ragam, for a listener who wants to listen to the source ragam, that should also be audible, that should not be distorted. For a listener who wants to listen to the destination ragam, that also should perceptually be conveyed. And all of these have been beautifully showed by him here, right? What I meant by saying limited range, I will just try to, you know, indicate. Again, uh, apologies for playing in between. Yes. this is Shadmuga Priya, but all these kind of sequences can belong to both ragas, but we can only touch the lower panchama. We cannot go beyond that. We cannot even establish the sa of the Kannada. If I were to do that, I would go to the Shuddha Madhima of the source ragam, which would be Nata Bhairavi. I cannot simply play Kannada in Madhima Shruti. I cannot do... This is not possible. I will have to just say... That's all I can stop. And then he has gone back to Shanmuga Priya. That kind of a thing. He has even essayed all his concepts. He has even essayed, essayed Nata Kurunji in Shanmuga Priya, if I remember right, right? So, to those who can think in terms of swaras, we can say, mm -hmm. we almost, that kind of an effect. This is what happens, right? But we have to be very careful. Even the Panchamam of the Natakurunji cannot be essayed here because of the Pratimadhimam of the Shanmupriya. So he has taken such care and so subtly shown. Of course, his Gravedam in his uh, uh, Bharatiya composition tuning as well as his own composition, I think, which was in Jai Jai Devi, is again a beautiful concept. But these are examples where he has just shown, you know, the, the, he has shown it as a suggestion and left it to the jnana of the listener. A slightly more explicit example, which is equally charming, I would like to play. This is from Sarasa Samadhana, Nata Sahodarini line, right, which comes in the second part of the Charanam. These play buttons are not working. So here we see how beautifully he has used He has established those notes in the Avarona Krama because that would give a different kind of, uh, you know, 
uh, emphasis. But here, just using the Avarohana Krama, he has established the Swaras of the 65th uh, Mela, uh, the Kalyani clan. We may call it Kalyani, we may call it some other, you know, Ali Draga. He has just shown the Sanidha Pamagari Sar. Even in his accompaniment, I have come across, I have humbly come across a lot of examples where he has shown so much of, it's not for me to say Vidwat, right? We are nobody to say that, but we must appreciate that. And very, you know, it, it is subtle. It's not something overbearing. For example, in one um, case, I remember um, the great Sri M.D. Ramanatha here has sung, Takabodham in Buddha Mashrayami, right? Takabodham Mashrayami, that kind of thing. He has taken a small Tirmanam from the Samam to Yadam for the 42 units. Mm. So, uh, if we understand this in the concept of Mr. Chapa, we know it comes kind of thing. But here what he has done is use those, f because Samam, to, Samam is 40 plus 2, 42. He has quickly, you know, replied this way. That's an example. Another example I can think of is when Sri MDR, MDR was singing his own composition, Janani, in Shankarabaranam. Moon Tali Tripure were there. Takita Tripure. So there he has done, I mean, he has sung a pattern like, sa, 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 pa, 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 followed by Sarvala Gumaga Sariga Tripure. Tripure. And the three into five he has given from the Samam to the Adam. He has said this in a lot of his solo concerts, but So that I would like to just uh, point out here. And as I said, the syncopation effect has always been beautiful. For example, uh, in a, see, these are simple concepts, but very beautiful aesthetically. For example, in his solos, he has played in Latangi. Kind of thing. And of course, as beautifully brought out in the lecture demonstration of uh, Music Academy last year, the Paridana Michite, Rokamichutakene. How beautifully he has, you know, used 332 pattern, right? That's a very, I mean, beautiful concept. Mm. If I were to try it in Latangi, let me try. Mm. Kind of thing. So here we see, at initial glance, it looks like three condoms in Kir column and coming in four avartanams, there must be some fractions. I mean, that's how the mind thinks. Actually, it's this most simple, you know, form of eights, right? Tam, tam, ta, tam, tam. But by shifting the accents and trying to give the patterns of five, he has established the aesthetic beauty of Lyam and um, as uh, pointed out by our illustrious uh, uh, Sri Jiji Arana and Srimati Vijayaka, we see that, you know, this kind of a thing was appreciated by his seniors like Sangeeta Kalanadi's Alatur brothers. I believe there's also Pallavi in which he has said the same concept in Kiravani, which was appreciated by Sriman Sangeeta Kalandi, Sri Palakad many a year. So these are small examples. And again, we can only skim at the surface, touch the tip of the iceberg here. I'll play a small core way in Nannu Palimpa, whatever he has played. Uh, let's first enjoy it. It is in an AIR Pondicherry recording. By the way, the Chanuga Priya, Grahavedam, and this, the recording quality may not be optimal, but the quality of the music more than makes up for it. So let us view it in that context. Right? Okay, I think Kuncho volume of Lama. Idi Kumatra.
such a beautiful concept. He has played a similar thing in the 1981 Radio Sangeet Sammelan for Bala Gopala. There he has used a you know, similar um, formation for each of the rounds. But here what we see, if we see the center round, right, the music clusters, right, the clusters of the music are in three, Sariga, Dasari, Padasa. But the carways are reducing in clusters of two. So that delightful interplay makes it complex, right? So for example, Sariga Padasa, Sarika Dasari, Padasa Sarika Dasari, Padasa Gaiti, Karisa the Badari, Risa the Bagapa Sada, Sada Bagari Tam. This is the central round. Now you can always redistribute the carway, that's what he has done here. Sarika Dasari, Padasa Sarika Dasari, Padasa Gaiti, Karisa the Badari, Risa the Bagapa Sada, Sada Bagapa Dasati, Padasa Gapada, Dasati, Padasa Gapada, kind of thing. So that's beautiful, right? It requires a lot of alertness while playing. It's easier to say, Sarika Dasari, Dasati, Padasa, Padasa Gapada Gaiti, Karisa the Bada. It's easy. And from this, we also get a seed thought. Why not make everything fine? Sarika Dasati, Dasati, Padasa, Padasa, Gapada, Gaiti, Karisa the Bada. All these thoughts will keep emerging as we think about his contributions. So this is an example, just a small example of so many core ways he has played. And again, the field has been beautifully extended uh, by the contributions of um, uh, Sri JJR and uh, Srimati Viji here, right? We see so many beautiful uh, core ways composed by him. We must appreciate that. You see, they say dharmo rakshati rakshitaha. So the dharma is that which protects and which must be protected. So they have protected the Sangeeta Dharma and, you know, enhanced it. <laughs> and we must always make sure that we attend every possible opportunity to listen to them. Then, a few examples on Raga Alapana. Actually, I had a small Palamanjari in the initial slide. I'll see if I can get back to it. But let me go in this order. You see, raga is a very um, unique concept of Carnatic music. It has a distinct personality of its own. There are scales in other music. Even in Brahadeshi, Matanga, I said, Yo Sau Dhvani Visheshastu, Swara Varna Vibhushitaha, Ranjako Jana Chitta Anam, Sarago Kathitho Budhai, Saraga Kathitho Budhai. Ranjako Jana Chitta Anam. It must please. That's what Tyagaraja said when he says, Ranjillave O Manasa, in Raga Sudharasa. And he says it's Swaravarna Vibhushit. It's a Dhvani Vishesha. It's the bedrock, the substratum is Nadam, Dhvani, and Swaravarna Vibhushitaha. It is ornamented by Swaras and Varna. Varna here doesn't mean Tana Varna. It means four types of Varna which were defined then. Arohi, Avarohi, Sanchari, Sthai. You can either go up, you can come down, you can stay in the same place, or you can combine the ascent and descent. These are the four types of Varna. So the sequencing of notes is implied there. And Ranjako Jana Chittanam, it must please. Saraga Kathito Budahi. This is what the knowledgeable definers Raga, right? And in his music, we have already seen how beautiful the Gamakas, the Anuswaras have, I mean, manifested themselves, the, which shows the beauty of a Veena. From the beauty of a Nagaswaram or Nagaswaram, Nagaswaradi is how Muthuswam Dikshidhar has in his Tyagaraja Mahadvajaroha in Sri Ragam. So I'll use the term Nagaswaram. He has also used the same term. Let's hear in his own voice first. Contribution of the Nagaswaram towards increasing the popular appeal of Carnatic music cannot be adequately described. The Nagaswaram music in weddings, temple functions, and during the processions of the preceding deities in the calm, still hours of the night had a remarkable reach and enveloped people in its magic. It can be said that instead of people going to listen to music, the music was brought to them. I still remember in my very early days, I had the good fortune of enjoying the music of most great Nagaswaram exponents. It is somewhat emotional to listen to his own voice. It's an emotional experience. Now let us hear a Natakurinji Raga Alapana, the intensity of phrasings. See, it may not be appropriate to just call his Bani as Nagaswarabhani, no. I mean, but it has all the ingredients of the beauty, intensity of a Nagaswaram, a Veena, 
vocal and much beyond right but let us just listen to this small uh, you know uh, excerpt such a beautiful segment of natakurinji it was played in an air national program uh, either in the late 60s or early 70s it is a duet between him and his sister and i said raga must have a separate identity right so an analogy which comes to mind is you know when a face detection algorithm is run by a computer it will calculate the interocular distance this is the axis between the eyes this is the tip of the nose and uh, you know 18 features and then it uses to distinguish faces and today it can be done in a jiffy but the human mind is going to perceive if i see any of you i can recognize you know people known to me in a jiffy so that's the strength of the ragam even people who don't know the intricacies of the swara sequencing the arohanam arohanam the phraseology should be able to recognize the raga so that is the greatness of our music and we see that he has often you know essayed it like the raga akshiptika you gently throw or hurl the raga at the listener that's the theory right so in the first stroke itself you do hear the raga in his 
renditions. That's one more thing to be kept in mind. And when I said, you know, about the holistic picture, even people who are not trained in music can immediately, you know, recognize the raga and even sing it. I know people two generations, let's say, above me, who can even sing Sahana, Yadukala Kamboji and ragas like that without knowing really the internals if they didn't have the opportunity for musical education. So that's on the Raga Lapna perspective. Probably I missed out one small thing in the initial slide which I would like to first go to and then come back here. You see, we talk about Ratna, right? Ratna Surukkama every in the Palamanjari Vashchir Karna Papa. So it's such a beautiful palamanjari captured in a nutshell. Incidentally, he has played Sanatana in his album, but this is not for Sanatana. This is for Sri Venkatesha. And again, we must remember that the contributions are ongoing and we hear a beautiful Chittasaram from the celebrated duo today for the same Sri Venkatesha. I think we must give them a big round of applause. <laughs> so coming back to the kind of uh, raga in a nutshell. He can essay raga within 40 seconds or I've heard him live essay for 20 minutes, 25 minutes in the early 80s and it, it was a thrilling experience, right? And uh, let me just get back to that point. Right, I would not like to play a small clip of his essaying Kokila Varali. This raga is Sorry, so Sari Gari Ma Padani the Sa Sadani the Pamari Gari Sa Tiagaraja's composition Samukana Nilva Galguna. He has played this as an accompaniment, but let us see in this Vakraraga, which is highly symmetric but seems to constrain the scope, right? How he has you know, envisioned this raga. I would like to play this small clip. such a beautiful example of Kokila Varali. He has expanded the scope of the scale and made it so profound, I should say. So it's almost like whether it's a Ghanaraga, Ghana Nayaraga, Rakti Raga, Deshya Raga, like Tyagaraja says, Duranaya Deshya Mutragunamo in Nada Sudhara Sambilano. We find that each of his Raga Lapanas, there's an example of Davati also coming up, we'll just come to that. That can be said to be a Deshya Raga, it's more from the Hindustani tradition, of course. But before that, I also wanted to say that some of his prayogas, because of his Vadi Samvadi Puritam and the symmetric patterns he has envisioned, has expanded the scope of the Raga and 
today we find that those gel very well within the scope of those time honored ragas for example in begda we do find he has played sagarega madapada pagarega that kind of it fits in very beautifully in the framework of begda but this madapada with without we do hear na 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 this is a commonly heard prayoga but to match sagariga sagariga madapada that is his vision of the raga there right so those are the everlasting contributions as seen from the eyes of a rasika i would say uh, before going to the gaudi i would like to play his own voice singing a neraval uh, the violin is by sri ji jayaranna agama it's an example how the raga is the bedrock even in the neraval which i believe he used to like to call sanchari bhava we will also now listen to a small you know segment where he has accompanied uh, sangeeta kalandi sri gnb sir sri gn sir as he was known he must have hardly been in his 20s ipo hindustani sangeetha romba paravala irukku paravala irukku ஆனால் அந்த காலத்தில் எப்படி இந்த காவத்திங்கிற ராகத்தை கையாண்டிருக்காருன்னு
don't see how he has played this raga by the way samapani sa sadama paramare sa this is the scale of course since there is an isharam in the avarohanam you can say sani sadama paramare sa but the compact form of avarohanam sadama paramare sa we have heard this rageshri telana very fondly and this is another gem we do here as an alapana and you can see even in the 1950s when hindustani music might have not been so um, so much heard or so much prevalent in the south you can see as then na all those kind of tan patterns we see with the beautiful janta swara janta anuswara kind of things right so we do see how he has been a visionary and much ahead of his times as was uh, rightly pointed out right so beautifully pointed out i would also like to include a few aspects on his own thoughts on the violin he has given lot of lecture demonstrations quoting lot of very authentic and authoritative works which say that the bowing the you know aspect of bowing has emanated from bharata desha and uh, he has talked about ravanastram uh, i will just play a small clip this is probably slightly later in his life but in the early 80s i remember hearing live you know 81 82 uh, in bombay the 80 i think uh, they like them on um, a violin which was so well received i take this opportunity to say a few words about the violin the advent of the violin was with the arrival of the british it is an accepted fact by western musicologists that the origin of the violin has been traced in india and it has been referred to as ravanastram for the past two centuries violin has merged with our music and has now become indispensable bal swami dikshar was the first to play and popularize it during maharaja swayitrnath period vadivelu played the violin in trivandrum and was rewarded with an ivory violin it was tirukodi kaval krishna iyer who added stature to the violin by introducing it as an instrument suitable for a solo concerts maestros such as malikote govind swami pillai dwaram vengit swami naidu and mysore chaudaiya were highly respected soloists so we can see how deeply he feels about the subject whether the violin originated in india or not is a matter of how each person interprets it but definitely there are data points to show that bowed instruments which are exactly you know the principle of the violin what we call as the you know uh, stick slip phenomena is a very important aspect of bowed instruments as opposed to plucked instruments these are in the realm of acoustics so that has all emanated from here and he has so beautifully pointed it out he has talked about the past masters but we remember him as the trend setter in so many aspects he's talked about balasam adikshar and i would like to quote a small um, you know verse which is about balu swami dikshit in the context of a uh, you know uh, muttu swami dikshit char- charitam it has been authored by dr v raghavan but there is a flow to the you know thoughts here so i would like to say that karnata vidusho hastam samasadya navan navan vadyam tyaktad vyanjayamasa huna vismapanan nayan so what it means is when the violin reached the hands of carnatic vidwans the instrument itself manifested newer and you know newer behaviors maybe the gamakas the jarus you know which were not heard in the west at all so they evoked wonder in the britishers themselves now let us look at how a violin aware western violinist has talked about his violin in the same context i'll just read out those words the first thing i for one noticed that lalgudi sir clearly exploits the potential of the violin to a degree unknown in the west and presumably that is generally true of how the instrument is played of course we know he has added a separate dimension um, to our music so we can see how what in the sanskrit verse was talked about as 
you know, the Britishers evoking a lot of um, amazement, I mean, the violin techniques evoking a lot of amazement in the Britishers is also exemplified by Sri Lalgudi sir himself, right? And as seen by a person who may not be exposed to his music or culturally conditioned in our music. In fact, this lady says, your readers may be interested to hear of the reactions of one reared in classical Western music and the Western way of playing the violin. So they often say, Vidwaneva Janati, Vidvajana Parishramam. So this is an example of how his music was appreciated by the cognizant in Western music using the Indian idiom. I don't know how much more time we have. I kind of can wrap up now or you know, sell musical examples. Okay. So I talked about this Nada Sudhar Asam Kriti, but we can see how it kind of gives a framework for looking at his music where Tyagaraja says, Swaramularu Nokati Ghantalu. So he uses for Saptaswaras, he says, you know, Arulu Oka, six plus one. The reason is the six swaras are born from Shadja, right? Shat is six, Ja born out of. So the other swaras are born out of Shadja. That is the beauty. And Tyagaraja has beautifully described that itself. And the weight of his Shadja with the double string or whatever, we don't need to get into techniques here, but we see when he used to play Meenakshi, Memudam and things like that, the starting itself used to be such a rich Nada filled environment. So that Shadja concept, right? He says those were Lord Rama's uh, bells, right? Vararagamu Kodandamu, Lord Rama's bow exemplified the Raga, right? So we can kind of relate to a lot of these when we think of um, Sri Lalbudi sir's violin, its bow and all that, right? Duranaya Deshyamu Triganamu, Lord Rama's Trigunas are like Dura, which is Ghana, Ghana, Naya and Deshya. We saw Ghana Raga, we saw I mean, I might have not played any Ganaraga today, uh, but Nayaraga, Deshiraga, and all that, right? Nirata Gati Sharamura, his arrows, Lord Rama's arrows were like the steady tempo. Again, we talked about Brahmalayam here. Sarasa Sangati Sandarbhamu, I mean, his Sangatis, musical Sangatis, right? Uh, here, Lord Rama is being exemplified musically, but we are just using that as a framework to think of Lalbudi sir's music also. His speech was like the sweet Sangatis, right? So I would also like to, you know, Mahavidwan Sri Samangudi Ayarwan, what he has said about Sri Lalgudi, sir. Jaira Manavurgu Paramparaya, Manu Paramparaya, Anju Paramparaya, Vidyut Paramparaya, Chandavur. Lalgudi Ramayir Avurgu Yandavur, Chagaraj Swami Nair Shishya. Maharaja Kuput to Varmatin, Sonavar, Tagaraj Swamil, Tan Shishir Kuput to the Lalbudi Kipui, Lalbudi Le, Sutter Shishur, Provotus Sumati, Avale, Ranjiki Kuput, Lalbudi Pancharatun, Kirtan Tagaraj Swamil, Party for Nurka. Abdul Piri Vidwanavar, Mysore Samastan Pur and Manala Vidwan Ayundi, Pallavi Rama Yirnu Pera Vangi. Angi Inniku, Jagan Mogan Palace, the Rami Rudi, Poto Pudan, and Kayu Pute. Avrudi Puladan, Radha Krishna Yernuku. The Radha Shri Rudi Mahavid Nadi Shivan Walkachir, Nagaya was Chalun and Kayu Pute. Radha Shri Rudi Puladan, Nama Kandasami Bhagavatar, who to Madri Lerna, Avrutmatam Bhagavatar. Mother of the Sami Bhagavatar is on a dante. Go for a year. Very filled with one head. Our good day. Go for a year. Puladan, Nama Jairaman. Jairaman, Shrimati, Trundu Berum, Violin was a triple of Umba, Air Chibitu. Niki, Dikvijim Punipu under Clark Jeraman Umba, very good Dishali Hill of Turnute, Nan, Munur Sampoja Milashu Yedakurtano Yudama, Wa Sokhima, Vashikinama, Wa Yedarandano Shigir Tayara, Yenda Pata Rundano, Pinu Shimile, 
அதனால அது ஒரு பெரிய சுபாவம் நான் இந்த பாட்டுக்கு தான் வாசிப்பேன் நான் இந்த பாட்டுக்கு வாசிக்க மாட்டேன் இதெல்லாம் இந்த ரொம்பவே கிடையாது அவருக்கு எல்லாத்தோடைய ஒரு வாசித்து அவா வாசித்தையும் அவா அவா என்னத்தை பாடினாலும் அதையும் வாசித்து தன்னுடைய திறமையையும் காட்டி நல்ல பேர் வாங்கி வந்து இன்னைக்கு ஜகத்யாதியாக இருக்காங்க அதெல்லாத்தையும் காட்டுற ஒரு சுபாவம் ரொம்ப நல்ல சுபாவம் ஸோ வி கேன் சி ஹவு He has spoken in such glowing terms about Sri Lal Gudi sir. So that's one thing I just wanted to play out here. Then in terms of the dynamics, there is a short clip in Kamalam Bam Bajare, how he has essayed this Dukha Dhvam Sinim and then Ham Sinim. The Ham Sinim part has been essayed with such delicacy, right? And when he talk about Dukha Dhvam Sinim, he has even, you know, used the, uh, you know, the bowing technique to highlight the first word so beautifully <laughs> another example of the dynamics he used to employ so beautifully i would also like to point out i mean maybe as a prelude to the uh, next topic for maybe the next 5 minutes i would like you to listen to this version of maravairi which he played in his early years as i said we must appreciate every version equally right so uh, this is not to judge any version better than the other let's just enjoy and let's look at the sheen of the nadam also
So this is an example of, see certain Kritis, they have just had their Sangatis cast in stone and they are rock solid and the same Sangatis are beautifully, that's in 90% of the cases, so beautifully and rigorously presented. The rigor we saw in Konyadin and Apai, here also there's a lot of rigor, but there are some Kritis where he has used his artistic decision to remold some of the aspects for very, you know, deep reasons. We, the version we are aware of in his violin playing, that is what we are aware, the Panchaman Yasam, here he has used the, of course there is one uh, different part we have heard, in Adi Talati Sarandadai by other schools, but I am just saying that this kind of dovetails into the next small topic, which is, let's listen to Paramat Mudu, uh, in this first clip, I would like to play a vocal rendition of Sri Samangudi Ayurwal. It is the only recording available of Sri Samangudi rendering this Kriti, incidentally. And Sri Lalgudi sir has provided the violin um, enhancement here. So let us uh, listen to that, the Anupalavi par portion. <laughs> stop there. Basically in the, see again all these versions are equally precious. In this version what happens is you hear the Dirga Kampitam by the vocalist and in fact subtly you do hear, you know, Sri Lalgudi sir playing what I will just say. So he sings, mm. so the whole uh, Swarasanchara is, right, but you know, Ta -na 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 -na. that Shatshuti Rishabham and the way Sri Lalgudi sir used to handle the Madhyamam, uh, we will see in the next clip, but even in this clip, if you carefully observe, he has not used the Dirga Kampitam for the Madhyamam. He has only said, Hariyate Harudate Hariyate, kind of a thing, right? Uh, even in this accompaniment, which was in 1979, but let us see his own version, how he has used in a solo of 1973, where he has used the conventional structure, right? And then we will see what happens later. <laughs> So there we see that he has used the Sangati structure, uh, but he has used in a slightly modified way, but later to disambiguate Vagadishwari from perhaps Harikam Boji, let us see how he has handled the, you know, same line, right? First is violin. Oh. 
is a radio program. He has also given an album, but this is a radio program. So we see that he has directly taken off into the core structure, right? He has talked about in the earlier voice clip, if we heard, the Sangati should not be for the sake of Sangatis and they should be meaningful. He had some very you know, profound reason why he chose this Sangati structure in his later refinement, right? Again, I'm not trying to say this is better than that or that's better than this, but we must appreciate all these aspects as we hear his music at various uh, in various concerts, in various recordings, at various stages of his, uh, you know, uh, musical journey. And it would be incomplete if we don't hear this in his voice, so let's hear these two lines as sung by him. so beautifully that he has taken the you know sancharam which ranges across the you know say from the gandharam to the tarastai um, shatshruti rishabham and established vagadeshwari and built the strangati structures around that i'm not going into other audio examples but i would like to point out that earlier versions of his balagopala until say 1981 he used to include this vani sharchita pitambara dhara vaijayanti mala dhara line right but in later versions, he probably, you know, eschewed it because he, I mean, there could be various reasons. We, again, it's not for us to second guess any reason here. But it's interesting that Sangeeta Sampradaya Pradeshni does not contain these two lines. That's one thing to be noted. And it's also interesting that this, I've heard as an anecdote, Sri Ambidikshitar has taught two students, right? Sri S. Rajam and uh, Srimati D.K. Patamal Amma. So, to one person, he taught these, uh, the, the Kriti with this um, set of lines, and to the other, he did not teach. And after a radio program, when they exchanged notes, they were very surprised. So, these are some of the delights we can see when we hear each of the renditions. We probably should not approach it as, oh, we are going to hear Balagopala, I've heard it earlier. Each rendition is fresh, novel, uh, unique, and an experience by itself. And that can't be described. Right? I mean, it's like Chala Swanubhava Vedyame, like Saint Chaharaja says. Maya, in earlier days, he has played with the Chatushuti Daivatam, but given that the Raganga Ragapadhati uses uh, the Shuddha Daivatam to essay, you know, it as an equivalent of the 26th Melakarta, not Melakarta, but Raganga Raga, he used the Shuddha Daivatam reportedly. I have not had the fortune of hearing that version, but I've heard it said that he has used it. So these are all very uh, valuable uh, perspectives that he has, uh, you know, used and refined his own versions. Sadhin Chani, I have heard uh, recordings where he has used Samayaniki as an anchor line, 
but I have heard it reportedly said that he used Sadin Chene for very valid Sahityam reasons um, uh, because it's both about Lord Krishna and Lord Rama. So it would be more apt to go back to Sadin Chene. So I would like to conclude this particular uh, presentation. It's been quite a while. So the Taitri Upanishad says, Yato vacho nivartante aprapya manasasaha. So when we talk about the Brahman, he is beyond the scope of speech and thought or our utterances, speech, our thoughts have to come back empty when we talk about something profound like the musical experience and like the contributions of Sri Lalgudi sir. So that is the profound nature of this topic and uh, no words are, again it is chala swanabhava vedyame, each person has to experience and uh, feel it for himself or herself. And uh, as they say, kattadu kaiman alavu, kalladadu ulag alavu, inniki paarthadu kaiman alavu, so innum paarka vendiyadu ulag alavu, but in the kaiman alavu le, evula vishyam arukku inni paathom. That's also to be noted. Our manapooruma dhyanitha, our gali nithirvadi gali in the prayatnatha samarpikirin. Namaskaram. Thank you very much. All this goes to him. Thank you. Thank you profusely, Sri Shailesh, for this very uh, scholarly presentation. Right at the beginning, he said, uh, this is only a tip of the iceberg. And I realize it is just not the iceberg of the great music but also his own findings, like uh, what he has researched with a lot of passion, passion driven, and uh, with all that, he has carefully collected, researched, and he has so much more to share, definitely. I can see that. My humble pronouns, actually, initially I was thinking of Lalgudi sir about his research, so yeah. I nodded. Uh, my thing is very humble, thank you. Um, I, I say that with a very selfish motive that I want you to come back next year and uh, continue this presentation for Krithagnya. Um, Sahitya te avar ebdi treat pani irukkar, Korvegal ebdi treat pani irukkar, compositions, avaroda compositions, avar uh, over a period of time how he has evolved, I should not even say evolved, how he has seen music and how he has given us different versions of the same Kriti. Adala, uh, each topic can be lectured for days together. So that is what we saw, a glimpse of uh, all the aspects and uh, it was beautiful the way you started the lecture with uh, emphasizing on the importance of Nada and how Nada has been handled by him. Because uh, Nada as such can be seen through lyrics, through um, Layam, through the instrument itself, and beyond that, through his mind, how he has perceived Nada and how he has strived to give it through the instrument. So the emphasis that you uh, put on Nada uh, through the instrument, through the violin, that is a uh, point I should say that I want you to talk at length next time when you give a presentation. This was really beautiful and uh, I'm very happy that there are many students here and also uh, musicians. Sri Alapi sir was here. Um, it really uh, inspires uh, the speaker also when there are students and uh, artists like uh, my dear friend Jayashree and Mohan Santanam and many others, Jayashikarji. So uh, it's such a beautiful session and uh, more importantly, I'm, I'm sure many of you also went through this emotional journey as we were listening to all the recordings and the aspects that he was um, sharing with us. It was very emotional for uh, Anna and me. 
Um, so we even forgot to applaud when the beautiful music clipping uh, stopped or when he shared a point. So let us give a round of applause again. Thank you for this opportunity for us to relive many of the memorable, most cherished moments uh, when we were learning as his sishyas, when we took part in his uh, performance, um, sat by his side and uh, played with him. So many memories and we, this was an opportunity for us to pause and relive those moments through you, through your, the way you spoke and your uh, very understated way of presenting, um, a dispassionate and very understated, and, uh, and the language, the clarity with which you conveyed everything, and how beautifully you took us, uh, took us through all the points, almost all the points. And uh, the last one about Paramatmudu, where uh, you even pointed out how he has accompanied, how he has embellished Sri Samagudi Mama, and uh, where he has given his little bit, and then subsequently how he has uh, played, uh, treated the Kriti. That is a beautiful point, uh, which I think, as you rightly put, we can have a separate lecture just to understand the way he has treated all the Kritis. So we would like you to come back again uh, next year and uh, present one more, uh, uh, you know, taking specializing in, or probably focusing in just one aspect of his music and present a lecture demonstration. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. It's my great privilege. Thank you so much.